What's up, everybody? We've got me, Josiah Leroy. We've got Pete Her. We're talking Carrie Fisher here in uh, Happy Star Wars Week. We have The Force Awakens coming out this week. We also have some special guests, as you can see here. Uh, we're talking about, like I said, Carrie Fisher and her return to the saga. Uh, Pete's got a few thoughts on it. I definitely have a few thoughts on it. Uh, I'm not sure if she's the, the same princess we remembered from um, going on 40 years ago now. Well... You don't remember her from 40 years Yeah, no, ago. I don't. I, I went and, and reruns. Nobody in the studio here, since I'm old enough to be all of your fathers at least, um, <laughs> and I am one, uh, I, you know, I, I, was, I was there. In, in 1975, they started filming this. She was 19 years old in 1975. I was 13, doing the math. No, I was 11 at, okay. that, at that point in time. Uh, came out in 1977. I was 13 years old, and uh, in 1983, came out again in Le Leia's slave bikini. Mm -hmm. I was 19 years old at that point in time. You know, like this is this. She's a huge part of of my growing up years, and and uh, she. Most it, of us. Well, the thing about uh, um, Carrie Fisher is in in 1977, she achieved something that really hadn't been achieved up to that point in creating a very strong female character. Um, and, and we still don't have as many of those as we should. I mean, we have all of the stuff going on every, you know, every, almost every week there's somebody arguing about Marvel putting out a, a female lead um, superhero movie. Sure. And, and Carrie Fisher achieved that in 1977. Totally. You know? Yeah. So, and it's hard, hard enough today, you're right. And we're looking back Going back to 1977, imagine, I guess, I imagine it would have been mind-blowing at the time. Oh my gosh, there's this lead character who's awesome. Everyone loves her, respects her. She's gorgeous. She's good with a gun, you know? like. Well, and she, I mean, she was just strong. She was confident. She was she a leader. Was, right. She was yeah. absolutely, from the minute you saw her on screen, she was confident, and she was, she was more confident than most of the male. I mean, certainly way more than Luke and Han. Oh, yeah. Right? She was the strongest character in that in that group. No, and, no flaws, I would argue. Right. And then after, uh, after Star Wars is over, her career took a, a different path. I mean, Harrison Ford, he, he became the quintessential movie star. Um, he's, he's worth, you know, $200 million today. Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, not so much. Carrie Fisher is worth about $5 million today, which is nothing to sneeze at. But to be... Relatively speaking. To be that, you know, to be the person that that created uh, Leia, and to not have that. And a lot of it has to do with her life after Star Wars. At the end of Star Wars, in the um, Return of the Jedi, she was struggling with drug addiction already. She had cocaine problems while she was filming that third movie. She battled bipolar disorder for most of her life. Uh, when um, her, I mean, if you look at, look at her history of relationships, um, Obviously, um, very, very successful, beautiful woman. She was married once to uh, Paul Simon of Simon and Garfunkel fame. Um, I did not for, know that. For a year. And that was it. She dated another guy for a while. Uh, they have a child, Billy Lord, who is uh, supposed to be in this uh, film in a, in a small, uh, small capacity. They released pictures this week. Yeah. So she, uh, Carrie Fisher... Because of her battles, because of the demons that she was fighting, took took a, a backstage role in her career. She she became one of the most sought after script doctors in all of Hollywood. Um, worked on some some very important films, including the three prequel films. George Lucas called her back, helped her to or helped him to clean up the dialogue uh, and and make those which you know some people would argue that that um, maybe she didn't get paid enough or maybe she got paid too much for what she yeah. did, but I'm not that guy, you know. She's, um, so all of the parts on screen were much smaller. Where, totally. where Harrison Ford jumped into into these uh, these bigger roles and things. Um, I've learned a lot. I didn't know three quarters of the facts that you've just mentioned. I knew her daughter was in episode seven. Uh, they showed pictures of her this week. She's not quite rocking... Uh, you know, the full buns on the ears, but she's got them a little bit higher, and uh, the resemblance is, is there. So I'm excited to see what kind of, hopefully a little more than a cameo. 
Well, okay. my favorite thing about having her back in the spotlight is, and one of the reasons she was very successful, in my opinion, as a, as a script doctor, is she's so incredibly witty. She's so clever. She's so funny. She's quick. And she's uh, her, her media tour over the past few, um, few weeks has been absolutely hilarious. Uh, there's rumors that Disney's planning to retire the uh, Leah Slave merchandise as a whole. Uh, some father said, you know, what am I supposed to do? Show my, how am I supposed to show my daughter this? And, uh, and her response was, you know, well, t you know, you tell her that I didn't wear it because I wanted to. I wore it because I was forced to by, uh, by this oppressive slug. Uh, and uh, I didn't like it, so I killed him. <laughs> yeah, it's much, much better. Um, it's a pretty good lesson, yeah, I would say. Abs absolutely. Every father would want their daughter to know. I agree. <laughs> and then she did, uh, she did a great interview uh, for GMA with uh, Amy Roback. And uh, she brought her dog, who looks like one of the creatures from the cantina uh, in, the, in the first round of films. And the dog sat there with its tongue like hang, it almost looked like a fake tongue hanging out of its mouth the whole time while she's just, she's throwing zinger after zinger after zinger. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put links to both of those in the, in the post for this. But it's just, it's just so fun to have her back because she's, she's such a dynamic lady who unfortunately went through some difficult times that, that may have derailed a, um, a, a stardom like Harrison Ford's, you know? Totally. Um, Harrison Ford went down one path, ultimate movie star, to some of us. Mark, uh, Mark Hamill kind of went quiet for a few years, did voice acting for a long time. Now he's getting back in the spotlight with this, with Flash. And you're right, Carrie Fisher, a totally different path. Unfortunately, probably got the, the worst of it. Uh, so uh, it's unfortunate, you know, but it, maybe I, this is a nice comeback. I, I, don't, I don't think that, that Carrie Fisher is upset with where her life is. From listening to, you know, she, she's had some challenges. And uh, I think that uh, she's, a pretty, she's a pretty strong lady who, who overcame a lot of things. And, uh, I, I, you know, I was, that was the thing I was most excited about when we started talking about The Force Awakens is that that sort of trifecta of the original cast was back. Absolutely. Well, I hope uh, I hope she went through Force training and became a Jedi. I don't think she did. J.J. Uh, Abrams talked about that this week. But a guy can dream, right? So hopefully in the, an upcoming... Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Jedi, General... No, there's, there's a different speed. Trust me. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, we want to hear your thoughts, Jedi or General. Uh, are you excited about Carrie Fisher being uh, in Episode 7? Of course you are. But uh, there's a lot of questions that we have coming up for the movie, and they'll be answered, and uh, we're glad to see you back in the spotlight. But uh, leave your comments below. Subscribe to us on our official YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, the underscore Geekiverse. And uh, I'm sure we'll be having some more of these talks soon. May the Force be with you. And also with you. <laughs> <laughs>